You are listening to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. In this study, we will break down the Bible from B.C. to A.D. chronologically while offering historical context and real-life application for today. This series is brought to you by the Breakthrough Media Network. Hi, my name is Pastor Dave Engman, and this is uh, Scott Brecky. Hi, everybody. And we want to welcome you to the Bible Breakthrough, and we want to thank you for joining us. Ultimately, our goal is to lead you into a more deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. Yeah, and please look for the bonus video to this episode as we discuss further topics that come up uh, because of the scripture we cover today. Also, the show notes will be linked in the description of this production. All right, so in the last episode, we read Genesis 2, 4 through 25, and we discussed the beginning of humanity with the man and woman in the garden. Yeah, the scripture we're going to be uh, covering today is Genesis uh, chapter 3, 1 through uh, uh, verse 24. And here we show the deception and confusion that was led from um, the enemy and uh, man and women to um, the sin and its, and its consequences. Right, so the three questions that you should be asking yourself as you listen are, what is the text saying? What does it mean? And how can I apply what I'm learning to my life? So before we open the Bible and read, let's pray. Lord, I just pray that you, more than anything, would just be here and we would hear from you, Lord, clearly. God, that's what that's why we read the Bible, Lord. We want to learn more and hear more from you, Lord. So I pray that you would do just that. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. All right. So let's open up the Bible and let's read the passage starting at Genesis 3, 1. And we're going to read those 24 verses. Scott, would you uh, read Mm -hmm. the Bible? The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking around Uh, about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I I was naked. Because I was naked. Who told you 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 were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel." Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And the man, and to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground, 
from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve, because she would be the mother of all who, who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins from, for Adam and, and his wife Eve. Then the Lord God said, Look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out, take the fruit from the tree of life, and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and, sent, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashes back and forth to guard the way uh, to the tree of life. Mm, well done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So just want to discuss the key points or the takeaways from this that, that I gleaned. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is deception. Yeah. Um, here we see right at the beginning of the uh, reading today, the serpent, uh, who is the shrewdest of all wild animals that the Lord God had made, enters the equation and he speaks to the woman. And um, I know we've talked about, and we will talk about what that must have been like, um, having an animal speak to you. We don't know whether animals were speaking to him prior to that. Yeah. But so, so one key point is this is where we see deception come in. Uh, another point is disobedience. At this point, we recognize that uh, Eve and eventually, of course, Adam both um, are disobedient when they take a bite of the fruit that they were told not to. Mm -hmm. Doubt followed along with shame in that, in that uh, sequence of scenarios that occurred. Then hid, uh, they hid, so they hid themselves. Why did they hide themselves? Because shame um, came upon them. And then of course, when confronted by this, blame entered the equation. The woman said, well, it was, the man said, well, it was the, the, the woman uh, who made me eat it. And the woman said, well, it was the, it was the serpent. Mm -hmm. Finally, we get into, um, you know, uh, God's judgment uh, regarding this disobedience. And we see that paradise is lost for them, that they're banished from the Garden of Eden. And the consequences came that were handed down came first to the serpent. God cursed him. It's the first time we see that word entered into the scriptures, as far as I can recall. Mm -hmm. Then the consequences for the woman and the consequences for the man. So those are those are the gleanings of the main points. Uh, I'm, there, there are others um, that we can certainly talk about, and, and we will. So let's go back to the first one, uh, deception, and that serpent, Scott. Yeah. Um, do you, do you think that the other animals had the ability to talk, or was this a one-time occurrence, the first time that this happened? I mean, we've brought up, we need to make sure we let the text speak for itself, so I don't know. But I do know that right here in this verse, it, it, the serpent was. So, um, but I think about even what that would look like, right? I mean personally never had an animal talk to me. So um, that would obviously stand out as something out of the ordinary, right? I mean, yeah. what in the world's this so kind of you, catch, would catch me off guard. So what do you think? Do you think that by virtue of an animal talking to the woman that she might have been confused? Yeah. I, I mean, yes, she was. I well, mean, and, and the reason I bring it up is because, you know, God's command to them was to not eat that fruit, but he yeah. didn't tell them not to touch it. Yeah. And you, you and I had talked about this before, um, when confronted by the ser serpent, mm -hmm. um, an animal who's speaking to her, she obviously was maybe confused and added that out of that confusion, trying to gather her thoughts. Now, I'm not saying this is gospel truth here. I'm just discussing this because I thought it was an interesting point. Um, you, you know, we all get confronted, don't we? sometimes by someone, and it takes us a minute to regain our composure. Mm -hmm. And maybe in that 
time that we're regaining it, we start to speak without thinking. Because I don't know. I, all I can say is, is the reason she brought up the fact that she uh, wasn't supposed to touch it was because she was maybe confused. Do you have a, any insight to that? Yeah, I think, I think you hit it right on the head. I think she was just confused. I don't think that she was thinking that she was adding to what God was saying, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, he, I mean, he, the, the enemy obviously was there. I mean, it says she was, she was, um, she was tricked into doing this. But um, what, what I've seen though in, um, in my walk of my faith is we need to recognize, like you, you need to learn from this story. Like you need to recognize when the enemy comes because he will come to, to lie or to question. So I think it's interesting that the first thing that the enemy comes to do is actually question what God has originally told you. Exactly. Because we, we already know earlier in the story, he said exactly what to do and, and uh, what you can do, what you can't do, and then what happens when you do do it. Right. So, <laughs> do, 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 you do do. You do do. <laughs> yeah, so here's what, here's what I see. I see the uh, serpent getting her um, attention, yeah. maybe confusing her, and then immediately you know, uh, moving her to a place of doubt. Mm -hmm. Because she said what God said was that, um, of course we may eat, fruit from the tree from the trees in the garden it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden uh, that we're not allowed to eat god said you must not eat it or even touch it she added that part different yep. from what he said yep. and if you do you will die and then immediately the serpent says you, you will, will not die yeah oh. so um, so first he hits her with confusion mm -hmm. he confuses her and then he then he lays doubt down before her Yep. And he gives her an explanation that appeals to her. He says, your eyes will be opened and yep. you will be like God. God knows that. That's why he doesn't want you to do it, right? right. So now she's thinking, well, well, well if, if, you know, I, I want to almost maybe, well, I want to be like God. Right. I think I should know. I mean, I think it's maybe good to know good and evil, right? And it, absolutely. And what it does, too, is it shows you the cunning nature of the enemy. He convinced her. It says the woman was convinced. Mm -hmm. He convinced her. So he started with confusion. He yeah. laid down some doubt. Then he appealed to her humanness in a desire that she would want. And then she was convinced. Yeah. And so, you know, when we get to that section there of application we'll talk about. Yeah. It's the application that we would begin, like you said a minute ago, uh, that we would begin to recognize the way the enemy comes to us and what his tactics are. And by the yeah. way, we'll learn this as we continue through this journey of reading the Bible, but the enemy doesn't change his tactics. Mm. He's very consistent in mm. the way he goes about trying to deceive. Yep. All right, what did the woman want? She wanted wisdom. Or at least that's what she thought she wanted. Yeah. Right? Nope. And then uh, uh, when she and when uh, the man had taken a bite of that fruit, it said that at that moment, yep. at that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame yeah. at their nakedness. They didn't know they were naked. Mm-hmm until they made a decision to disobey God. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, immediately the consequences of that decision fell upon them. Yep. And it started with shame. Yep. And it came as a result of sin. And that's what the enemy does. He, he tries to shame us. Right? And we buy that shame. Yeah. yeah but... And we, once we buy it, we own it. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, all right. I found it interesting, too, that, uh, you know, God was walking in the garden. He was walking about the garden. They heard him and, and they hid. Yep. They hid from him. How often when we experience shame, do we then do the same thing? We try to hide. We hide from people, yep. uh, especially if it has to do with someone else. How many of you are hiding right now? 
And if you are hiding, what do you think that solution would be? Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, it's a good thought. All right. Um, when can, go ahead. Before we go, like, you know, verse seven says, at that moment their eyes were opened. What do you think that means? Because, you know, they're physical human beings and they have clearly already had their eyes, physical eyes open. Like they seen, they were walking around, they seen all these things. So, so there had to have been something else that happened that made them think, you know, before, um, up in 25, it says they felt no shame when they were naked, but now all of a sudden, so something changes there where they, they, um, they're, I don't know. It just seems like there's something else happening. That's not just physical, you know? Well, you know, what I would say, what I would say to that, or what I would think anyway, and, and I'm not the absolute authority the Bible is, but you know, we, this is a spiritual component that's being yeah. introduced here. It's a spiritual component. Um, when we receive the gift that the Lord offers us, um, immediately the Holy Spirit comes in to our being. We become the temple of the living God. And that moment, the transformation process begins to occur. And in the spirit realm, he, he begins to open our eyes yeah. to see things that we couldn't see before. Even reading the Bible. To a, a non-believer, the Bible is just a book of information. But to a believer, it's alive. Yeah, It's alive because the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, we've talked about the rhema word. The Holy Spirit is um, identifying um, or releasing a freshly spoken word for the now, mm -hmm. which is what that rhema word means. It's for the now. And so when we read it, we get something new every time. And, and Christian scholars People who've read this more than I ever have, or you, I mean, people have dedicated their whole lives to try to get to the bottom of the wisdom in the Bible. They've never been able to find it because yeah. it changes yeah. uh, as a result of this rhema word. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, and then, and then what happened is we talked is, is God confronted them. Yeah. Is God confronting you? Um, and what does that conf confrontation look like? What do you think it looks like? I, I, I believe that God is gentle to his sons and his daughters. He loves them. Doesn't mean he doesn't discipline them. Right. But at the same time, he, he, he confronts them. And what did she do? She turned right away, or Adam turned right away, the man, to, to blame. Yeah. Well, it was the woman who made me do it. And what did she do? She, she picked that baton out of his hand and <laughs> yeah. said, no, it was, no. well, it was the, the serpent, serpent who made yeah. me do it. Yep. And so that's what we begin to see. Um, as a result of all of that, there was uh, uh, paradise that was lost. Uh, God handed out the, the, the consequences as we read, and, and there were very precise consequences, both for the serpent, the woman, and the man. Oh, yeah. They all received that, and we uh, are a part of the lineage of that. We also are, 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 are experiencing those consequences, and the whole yeah. world is. Uh, and then paradise, of course, being lost, God's judgments handed down. They're banished from the garden. And, you know, and, and they brought, you know, uh, the Lord brought up a good point here. He's like, hey, what if they go back and, and they pick and eat from the tree of life? Well, then they'll live like this forever. So God banished them. Yeah. And he put a, a cherub in out in front. Uh, and and, and uh, what did he say? A flame? A flaming, um, flaming sword. Flaming sword oh. to, to guard the entrance. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting, uh, uh, boy, you could spend a whole 20 minutes just talking about that part of it. But um, application, um, you know, I want to talk about it. So, so, so we should always be sensitive to the Holy Spirit regarding application. Yeah. Uh, application is about obedience, and it's... It's about uh, and being obedient is the key that unlocks that that door to transformation. Yeah. Uh, what good, as we say, is knowledge if we don't uh, apply it or use it? So, Scott, um, can you just summarize for us here, just in a thirty seconds or less, uh, what type of application you might have? Yeah, I think on? it's. It, I touched on it a little earlier. I just think it's recognizing when. Um, the, almost like it's you are starting to recognize when the enemy is approaching you and I think what the Bible describes a little bit later 
um, in the New Testament in 2 Timothy 2.22. It says, actually, um, it says, uh, run from this temptation. Mm. Run. That doesn't mean stay around and maybe wait for it or maybe l- keep looking at it. It means when you notice it, turn around and head the other direction, run yeah. from that temptation. Yeah. So that, guess what? Because temptation will lead you into sin, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so just recognizing when, when that temptation is coming is what I think I take from it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. Um, how about you? What can you apply uh, from what you've read or heard today mm-hmm. to your life? And, and again, if you're struggling with this, any of the topics that we're discussing, or if you're struggling with any of the Bible, you know, I want you to know that it's all right to struggle and wrestle. We all do. It's part of the process that we all have to go through. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're not alone. A lot of people are struggling, but hang in there. Uh, just keep coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, again, just a reminder to check out the bonus video to this episode as we dive deeper and discuss the topics from this episode. Thank you for being a part of this, Scott. I appreciate yep. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys for all of you for, for listening, tuning in. We look forward to our next meeting together with you as we continue to um, uh, journey down this path. Uh, our next episode is episode five, and um, we're excited to see what God brings us in those words uh, in this first era of beginning. So thank you very much, and God bless you. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to The Bible Breakthrough with Pastor David Engman and Scott Brecky. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and will join us again for more of the Bible from B.C. to A.D. We are a volunteer-driven ministry and rely on you to help us get the word out to the world. Please like this podcast on Facebook, share it to your page, and continue to listen on Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. This has been a broadcast of the Breakthrough Media Network.